Before Italy, the world knew a kaleidoscope of fractious kingdoms. Once Imperial Rome, the water world of Venice, Michelangelo's Florence, operatic Milan. But Italy, the nation, begins in its heavens, at its northwest passage, where painterly perfect mountains collide with a city of tumultuous invention, where suffering and freedom intertwine, where cliffside castles are built, sky-top fortresses erected to resist the invaders they knew would come. In these heights, by brave hearts never conquered, is born the unifying miracle. Il Risorgimento, Resurrection, the birth of Italy. The first parliament, a new flag, long bickering cousins made one. It happens here in the shadow of these frosted Alps, amid the capacious piazzas and endless porticos and Baroque splendor of long embattled Torino. Tonight, in the country's first capital, 2,500 athletes have arrived at the doors to Italy. With stories from across the globe, born of a certain place, united by an indomitable passion. Like the one who left home alone to seek his destiny in an Oz called St. Petersburg. And the new Beijing capitalist who competes not for money, but love. Some are small town heroes. He's cut the wood for his skis in a forested Austrian highland. And in tiny Tarnaby, a 24-year-old Swedish sensation already has a holiday named just for her. These stories end only to begin again. Chronic illness conquered by a triumphant resolve. A nation's enduring inspiration who's defied a failing body stitched together by 12 surgeries. The one who subdued the agony of defeat and the shadow of death. And after the record gold rush of Salt Lake City, the red, white, and blue is expected to rise again and again. There's the young Americans in a 21st century sport. From the west, San Diego's fiery marvel. From the east, captivating borders burning with a vivacious brand of excellence. He's the philosophical daredevil drawn to Alaska's wild to tease the outer limits of his fear. And he's the electric Colorado who sidesteps mayhem, head down, straight ahead. The American mosaic includes the object of another nation's frustration. This Seattle native of Japanese heritage who lives and trains with a zen-like zeal. He's a Texas cyclone, a whirlwind born from nowhere, so sudden, so daunting. He's called the exception. The royalty of American figure skating returned with clear purpose. One seeking to harness her tantalizing talent for one defining moment. The other to claim in her curtain call that only missing prize, Olympic gold. For all his life, this Chicago pioneer has stretched the notion of what is possible. For one last hurrah, this California screamer has willfully converted his body into a bullet. And this impetuous New Hampshire rebel defines his state's very motto. Live free or die. Their stories begin tonight where Italy was born. 
Where resistance has long flourished, wars ignited and extinguished. Where a kaleidoscope of kingdoms was finally merged in a city of majesty and sanctity, where competition ignites the flames of passion. A city of succulent style and stylish speed, where greatness is born of fearless visions and unconditional devotions. North of Rome and Florence, west of Venice and Milan, the world comes to Italy's alpine heights. Tonight, the world comes to hear stories, old and new. The stories of Torino. The Olympic torch has made its way from the skyscraping mountains of the Italian Alps toward Torino, passing through Sestriere, where reigning Alpine World Cup champion Bodie Miller will compete in five events. The torch just about to conclude a journey of some 7,000 miles through the Italian peninsula. The Winter Games have come to Italy for the second time, the first since Cortina in 1956, 50 years ago. Many of you at home are familiar with this country's other famous majestic cities, but now this mountainside metropolis tucked into Italy's northwest corner is about to gain its own global profile. The torch's journey concludes tonight at the opening ceremony of the 20th Olympic Winter Games at Stadio Olimpico. Built by Benito Mussolini in 1933, this stadium underwent a $35 million facelift, just one piece of a massive revitalization of this city for these games. Hello everyone, Jim Lampley from Studio One at the International Broadcast Center. The Torino Games officially begin tonight with the opening ceremony. And unlike the Summer Games, where the Parade of Nations is reserved for the latter portion of the ceremony, here at the Winter Games, the athletes march early. Of course, the night will culminate with the lighting of the cauldron, the identity of the final torchbearer, as always, a closely kept secret. Bob Costas and Brian Williams are out at Stadio Olimpico, and we'll join them in about 40 minutes. But first, we'll talk about three of the athletes who could define these games. Bodie Miller, certainly the most visible athlete coming into these games for his growing resume of historic successes and his steady stream of headline-making comments. He was on the downhill course today for official training. Miller's place in Sunday's downhill is secure, but there are three other American men vying for two remaining spots, and one of them qualifies based on today's training results. We'll have that for you shortly. Also, in Bardonecchia, where he's tweaking his 1080s, we'll check in with the California team called the Flying Tomato, Sean White, who swept into these games with victories in all five Olympic qualifying events. But we begin with the most recognizable athlete on the U.S. team five-time world champion and double Olympic medalist Michelle Kwan, competing in her third Olympics at age 25 in search of the one prize which has eluded her, Olympic gold. Kwan took an unusual path to these games, petitioning onto the team because of an injury, and for the first time arrives at the Olympics as a clear underdog. Kwan spoke with our Mary Carrillo this afternoon. You have had at various times hip problems, back problems, a groin pull, you're 